some students. Today's topic is going to be about numerical of chapter uh, kinematics. The first numerical which we are going to do is this. A train moves with a uniform velocity of 36 km per hour for 10 seconds. Find the displacement travel by it. And the distance uh, which we want our answer to be is uh, 100 meters. So first of all, we have to imagine that there is a train and that this is a given data, which is velocity is equal to V is equal to 36 kilometer per hour. We have to convert that kilometer per hour into meter per second. So we are multiplying it by 1000 and divided by uh, 3600. So in that case, uh, our this two zeros will cancel out of these two zeros, 36 will be cancelled by 36 and the answer is going to be 10 meters per second. So we have our answer in meter per second because of the SI units. Moving on to the questions part, time t is equal to 10 seconds. That means the time taken by the strain from rotation from point A to point T is 10 seconds and we have to regulate the displacement. Velocity is 10 meter per second. After 10 seconds it reaches the point here. We have to regulate the displacement d. The solution for this is very simple formula, which is the velocity is equal to displacement over time. We are going to find out the value of the displacement. So taking time to the other side, so it will multiply with the velocity, and we have the value of displacement is equal to v into d. So we can say the displacement is uh, 100 meters, which was under answer. The value of uh, velocity is 10 meters per second and uh, time is 10 seconds. So if we multiply them both, we will get a distance of 100 meters. That is our answer and that is the required answer as well. Moving on to the next question, a train starts from rest. Now, whenever students, there is student rest, you have to assume that rest means the initial velocity, that means vi is taken to be as zero meters per second. This is given, that means uh, whenever there's rest, whenever a question says that a body starts from rest, you have to assume that the initial velocity or in the case it says that the final velocity or that means it goes to rest, that means final velocity goes to rest, that means final velocity will be equal to zero. So rest means the velocity is going to be zero, the velocity is uh, having a value of zero, the body is not moving at this point. Moving on to the question part, he says, it moves through a one kilometer in 100 seconds. That means after rest, it moves to a displacement of one kilometer in 100 seconds in a uniform acceleration. What will be its speed at the end of 100 seconds? That means the answer should be 20 meters per second. For that, again, we are basically using a train the train has an initial velocity of 0 meter per second, which is given to us. It had traveled the distance of 1 kilometer or 1,000 meters or in just 100 seconds. So it traveled a distance of 1,000 uh, meters in just 100 seconds. So he says, what will be the final velocity at this point? What will be the velocity at this point when it uh, covered a distance of 1,000 meters? So let us put the formula of second equation motion S equal to Vi into half AT squared. We are taking the, uh, we will take the acceleration first because we can't find out Vf. We want to find the final velocity first. We have to find uh, A part because we can't find out the final velocity by the first equation motion, which was Vf is equal to Vi plus At. Because we don't have A, the A is not given in the question, but Vi is given in the question and D is given the question. From that, we can calculate the value of F, Vf, after we calculate the value of A by the second equation motion, S is equal to uh, Vi into D plus half A D squared. So from here, we can get the value of A. Now, the S is given to us, which is 1000 meters into Vi, which is zero, into D, which is 100, half A D squared. D is 100, so it will be 100 into 100 or we can say 1 or 10,000. So when it is divided, this two will cancel out with this 10,000 and the answer is going to be 5,000. So this is 5,000 and the new equation you can written as 1,000 is equal to A into 5,000 taking to the other side. These two zero will be 
three, three zeros can be cancelled. So one over five is the acceleration of that train from point A to point B. Now, students, we are going to calculate the final velocity. For that, we have the uh, formula of first equation motion, which was over here. Now we have A as well. Putting the values of Vi will be equal to zero plus one over five, which was the acceleration we calculated into t uh, which is 100 so our answer is 20 meter per second so it is not second square we have to write down 20 meter per second only because the velocity has a unit of 20 meter per second not 20 meter per second square so this is meter per second yes like that or you can simply write down velocity vf is equal to 20 meters per second. So this is our answer, which is the required value. Moving on to the next question. The next question says a car has a velocity of 10 meter per second and accelerated with 0.2 meter per second square. So here's the acceleration for half a minute. Uh, find the, dis the distance traveled by during this time and find the velocity of the car. And this is the distance we have, which we have to calculate and 16 meter per second should be the velocity at that point. Now, here is our imagination. Here is a car with these two wheels and this window. So, this is the velocity vi, which is 10 meter per second. It accelerated with 0 0.2 meter per second. In just 30 seconds, what will be its uh, final velocity over here and what will be the distance traveled by that car in this time, 30 seconds? So, we have to cover up the displacement part as well as the final velocity. The car moves, stops, final velocity is equal to zero because it stops. And uh, after at this time, not stops because the velocity is not stopping in this case. Because he says the body is basically traveling, traveled during this time, uh, or final velocity is there. So that means nowhere over here it is written at rest. So there must be a velocity in this case. For that, we have to get it VF, but first we are calculating the distance traveled by that car. So we're using the second equation motion, which is equal to. S is equal to VI into T plus half KT square. We are putting in the values of VI, which is 10 into 30, which is the value of T half into 0 0.2 into 30 square. We are putting the value of square. These two will cancel out, which will be equal to 90, and 30 minus 0 10 will be equal to uh, 300. So 300 plus 90, the displacement will be equal to 390 meters, which was our required answer. So the displacement is going to be 390 meters by the travel by that car. Now for the final velocity. What is going to the final velocity? Because we have the initial velocity, we have the value A, we have the time. So let us put in the values to 10 plus 0 0.2 into 30. Our answer is going to be 10 into 6 or 6 meter per second. Or we can say the final velocity was 6 meter per second. And that was our required answer basically as well. Moving on to the fourth question. A tennis ball is vertically upwards, uh, moving upwards with a velocity of 30 meter per second. It takes uh, three seconds to reach the highest point, calculate the maximum height reached by the ball, how long it will take to return to ground, and the distance travel should be 45 meters, and the time required by that ball is six seconds. Six second. Now, let us prove this by taking a tennis ball. It is gone up and it will come down. It took it how much to go, go up and come down. It says that the time taken for it to go up is three seconds and the time taken for it must be also uh, three seconds for coming down. But we will see that later on. For that, we have the data, which is equal to VI, is equal to 30 meter per second. And the time taken is given three seconds. The value of G is minus 10. Why it is minus 10? Because the ball was moving against the gravity. Whenever we say boys and girls, and students that whenever it is moving against the gravity or earth it is taken to be as negative that is why the negative sign is there because it is moving towards the sky and against the gravity and that is why we are taking the expression due to gravity as negative in this case now in this case we have the data which is T is equal to 3 seconds, the value of G is equal to minus 10 meter per second squared. Again, this is very important that we have to write down squared over here. So it is the unit of acceleration. 
and the time taken by it is three seconds. So what will be the velocity at the maximum height? And we have to calculate that. Uh, let's say that displacement is h, which we have to find out the maximum height it basically uh, got. But when it got to its maximum height, its velocity will become zero because it has to stop and come down to earth as well. So for that, we are using uh, the second equation of motion where we have replaced the value of s which is the displacement by h because it is vertical is equal to vi into d plus half gt squared because it is moving under the action of gravity but i might still add that what i was saying that the velocity at the final point vf at this point it is going to be zero because whenever you throw something up in the air it stops a little for a little while and then comes down we are taking that point at which it stops and that when it stops the velocity will be equal to zero at that point you have to remember this point in your mind and it will be used later on so now coming back towards our equation h is equal to vi into t plus half gt square putting in the values g is h is equal to 30 into 3 plus half minus 10 into 3 square putting the values it will be h is equal to 30 into 3 plus half into minus 10 into 3 into 3 because they are squared over here 3 into 3 it will be 9 multiplied by minus 10 it will be minus 90 divided by 2 it will be minus 45 and 3 multiplied by 30 is going to be 90 but we are going to solve it each at a time so 90 minus 45 it will be 45 meters the time taken by the ball from the initial point to the final point and the displacement uh, by that ball is going to be given as 45 the time taken from the initial point to the final point is Three seconds now as i told you the time taken from the ball to the initial uh, from the initial point to the final point is three seconds the same time will be required to go back which is uh, uh, basically the total time so the time taken was uh, going for going up is three seconds the same time will be for coming down so three seconds plus three seconds the total time will be six seconds the ball takes three seconds to reach to the maximum height so that it uh, takes the uh, same time to return to the ground so the total time is three seconds plus three seconds so the total time is six seconds and that was our answer as well moving on to the question number five it says a car moves with a uniform velocity of 40 meter per second for five seconds it comes to rest in just 10 seconds in a uniform deacceleration find the deacceleration total displacement or distance traveled by the car and the answer is minus four meter per second square and 400 meters so for that we assume that this is a car and vi is equal to 40 meter per second and time is equal to 5 seconds this is given to us in the question now assuming that the car is moved and stopped for a little while for after 5 seconds so what will be its velocity uh, at this point and uh, how much distance it has covered in this much time for 5 seconds for that we are basically calculating two things we have to calculate the acceleration that how much acceleration was there and how much distance was covered by that body or that car from A point to point B. For the displacement part, the distance covered in just five seconds because in the five seconds, how much distance was covered because it was moving uniformly. That is why we are there's no initial and final because both of them are the same, which is having the value of 40 into time was five seconds. The velocity uniform. That is why we are putting the value of 40 into five. We get the total displacement covered in this time in this five second is 200 meters now so we have to calculate the total distance traveled by the car this is only for the uniform velocity but it has uh, come to rest in the next 10 second as well for that we must have the acceleration part for that let's say it comes to zero what was the acceleration in this whole time for that we are using the first equation motion Rearranging it, it will be a is equal to vf minus vi divided by t. Putting in the values, the final velocity at this case was equal to zero. The initial velocity was equal to 40, and t was basically 10 seconds. So acceleration we calculated out to be minus four. That means the final velocity was less than the initial velocity. The distance travel after applying the brakes. Now this was the point when the brakes were applied and uh, the body basically stopped. Now, in this case, we are going to apply S2 is equal to VI into T plus half AD square because we have to calculate the displacement from this point to the point where it stops. So, in this case, we have uh, basically it was applying brakes from here, but we are taking that much part equal to 
uniform velocity. But from this point, the velocity actually began to decrease. So that is why we are using uh, this point as the point of initial velocity. So that is why initial velocity is taken to be as 40 because up till here the velocity was uh, 40 meter per second. After this, the velocity began to decrease and it became zero or rest at this position. So S2 is equal to 40 into 10 into half into minus 4 into 10 square where minus 4 is the expression we, which we already calculated. S2 is equal to 40 into 10 plus half minus 4 into 10 to 10, that is S square. Putting in the values, S2 is equal to 400 into 1 over 2 minus 4 into 100. Putting in the values, we'll get uh, S2 is equal to 400 minus 200 or S2 will be equal to S2 will be equal to 200 meters. That means this much displacement is 200 meters. But this is not the required answer. The total distance traveled by the car. That means that this distance in which it was uniform as well as this distance in which it basically uh, decreased in speed. So the total distance is S1 plus S2. It will be at 200 plus 200 or you can say 400 meters from here till here and that is our answer as well. Moving on to the next question which is question number 6 which says a train starts from rest with an acceleration of 0.5 meter per second square. Again we have to remember the meter per second square is there so we have to put 2 over here. Find your speed in kilometer per hour when it moves to 100 meters which is 36 kilometer per hour per hour is going to be our answer but how it is going to be our answer this is a solution where initial velocity because it's starting from rest and because it is rest so we have to take the initial velocity equal to zero the acceleration is equal to 0 0.5 meter per second square you have to remember putting square over here so that it's the perfect units of acceleration and the displacement is 100 meters so Initial velocity is 0 meters, acceleration 0 0.5. Let's move that train. It covers the distance of 100 meters. So, what is the final velocity at this condition? So, we are using the third equation motion 2as is equal to vf square minus vi square. So, putting in the values 2 is equal to 0 0.5 into 100 into f uh, square minus 0 square. So, f square will be equal to vf square is equal to um, 100, or you can say taking square on both sides so that we have vf only. So I'm taking under root on both sides. So this square cancels out with this under root part. And we have Vf is equal to under root 10 or sorry, under 100. The value of this under 100 will be equal to 10 meter per second. And the velocity at this part will be equal to under meter per second. But this is not the required answer. The answer has to be uh, written in kilometer per hour. So in kilometer per hour, we cannot say that this is uh, the right thing. That means we cannot multiply. We cannot multiply it by a thousand and divide it by hundred because this is the method to write the answer in kilometers. So what do we do? We reverse it. We multiply it by three thousand six hundred and we divide it by one thousand. The same thing. So this is wrong. And 10 meter per second can easily be written as this 10 zeros and these two zeros will be cancelled and this 10 will be cancelled out with this 10 over here. The only thing we will be left will be 36 kilometer per second and that is our right answer. So our answer is going to be 36 kilometer per hour. Next question, which is very important question and very lengthy question to understand. A train uh, starting from rest, again there is rest, so initial velocity will be zero, accelerated uniformly and attains a velocity of 48 km per hour in just two minutes. Then it travels at a speed of five minutes and finally it moves with a uniform retardation and stops after three minutes. Uh, find the total displacement covered by the train. The total displacement is to be calculated is uh, 6,000 meters, that is going to be our answer. But how it is going to be the answer, let us see. Uh, let's basically understand what is happening. This is the train and it's starting from rest. That means if vi is zero, it will move in the time two minutes from its uh, initial value of zero to a certain value of uh, 48 kilometers per hour. 
and after that it achieves 48 km per hour it basically moves in a uniform uh, speed of 40 km per hour or 30.33 meter per second for five minutes and after five minutes it decreases its speed it applies brakes and uh, stops after three minutes so there's a acceleration there's a uniform acceleration and there's a deacceleration as well in this question so you have to basically understand the concept and uh, the displacement we have to calculate that how much time or oh sorry how much time is given to us how much distance does it travel in this whole process from accelerating of the body to the deacceleration of the body as well now in this case we have a train accelerating unit moving with a uniform velocity and then stopping at this point now we have that in our imagination that what was going on in this question now we have to find out the total displacement for that we basically use a graphical method so that it is easier for us to understand where the graphical method says that on the x-axis we have time in seconds or we can say in minutes we can write down as well for this question because the question is given to us in minutes so we can write down in second as well in, in minutes no problem at that now in this case let us write down the data first for only the acceleration part only the acceleration part that means the train was starting from rest and it uh, basically accelerated to 48 point uh, 48 kilometer per hour in just two minutes for that part only we have the solution that is written in blue the initial velocity was zero because it started from rest the final velocity was 48 kilometer per hour so we have to convert this kilometer per hour into meter per second for that we multiply by thousand and divided by 3600 the answer is going to be 13.33 meter per second the time taken was two minutes or we can write down in seconds 120 seconds because we have to multiply it by 60 seconds the distance traveled in this in two minutes we have to calculate by a graphic method now we have a time of two minutes over here on the graph and the displacement or we can say the velocity it achieved in those two minutes is 13.23 meter per second now we have a area of a triangle which is this blue area and area of a triangle basically represents the displacement covered by that body in that time so the area of a triangle is half and the base is height. the base is two minutes or you can say in second you have to write down uh, in two minutes you can write down uh, 120 seconds and the height can be rated as 30.33 putting in the values the area of a triangle where half it to base into height putting in the values which will be one uh, s1 is equal to one over two into 3.33 which is the velocity into 120 which is the time we'll get a displacement of uh, 800 meters which is over here this is the total displacement of 800 meter which is written in blue so all of the acceleration part of this whole question will be written in blue Moving on towards the next part, which is the distance travel in just five minutes. And remember, in that part, it traveled the speed for five minutes. That means it traveled with a uniform, uh, it traveled with the speed for five minutes. That means the speed in those five minutes is going to be the same. It's not going to change. So the velocity in that case is going to be 13.33 meter per second. So the time taken is five minutes, or you can say five into 60 seconds or 300 seconds again we can show it by a graphical method where y-axis or the y part or the length part is represented by velocity which is 13.333 meters and the time over here is given as five minutes so the area of this uh, rectangle basically gives us the total displacement uh, so s is equal to, s2 is equal to v into t or the area of a rectangle is given by base into height so here is the base into height formula where b is equal to 5 minutes or uh, you can say 5 into 60 or you can say 300 seconds uh, and the height is uh, basically 13.33 so we multiply it we get uh, 13.33 into 5 to 60 or 13.33 into 300 multiply by with each other it will be 3999.9 or we can simply say that displacement in that case will be equal to 400 meters so the 400 meters will be of this rectangle the displacement for that train when it travel constantly at the speed of 13.33 for five minutes now moving on to the deacceleration part 
in that finally it moves uniformly retardation stops after three minutes the distance travel for three minutes now we have to calculate that the velocity because it decreases from uh, this velocity so the our initial velocity is going to be 13.33 and stopped basically because it came to rest uh, after stopping so it came to rest so our final velocity will be zero the time in minutes is going to be what three minutes so it is going to be three to sixty or you can say uh, 180 seconds so here is the graphical representation Here, why or you can say the height is given by 13.3 because this is the velocity from which the body deaccelerated to zero and uh, the displacement or so you can say the time taken for that body to deaccelerate is three minutes so we are basically putting in the formula of a triangle which is half into base into height where base is uh, three minutes and the height is uh, basically the velocity part the area for triangle is given to us which is half into base into height putting in the values we get half into 13.33 into 3 into 60 it will be half into 13.333 into 180 because 3 into 60 is 180 multiplying it we will get 1199.9 or simply we can write down 1200 meters simply so this is the 1200 meters now we have the displacement of all acceleration uniform acceleration and the acceleration now the total displacement covered by this whole body is we have to add s1 we have to add s2 as well which is over here which is of yellow color let's write right down blue over here so there's no confusion and s3 over here we have all these three uh, displacements now if we add them all we get 800 plus 400 4000 plus 1200 or 1200 we are going to add all of these areas like the area for triangle plus area for rectangle plus area for triangle uh, we get a value of 6000 meters which was our required answer and this is our answer as well 6000 meters is the answer one other method which is of this stream uh, accelerating moving in the uh, constant velocity and then deaccelerating is by applying the value of uh, 6000 meters we can also use another method which is area per trapezium because you can see there's an acceleration over here it moves constant velocity and the other deacceleration over here so up to here it is going to be 5 meter per second so we are using the area per trapezium in that method we can also solve it quite simply without any um, more uh, detailed work done because this is the uh, very simple formula where A is the distance uh, of one side with the shortest side and B is the distance of the longer side of the trapezium and H is basically representing the height of that the trapezium. Now, we know that this much distance on the graph was represented by 5 minutes or in other words, if we want to write down in second, it will be equal to 5 multiplied by 60 or 300 seconds. And in a similar manner, this much part of this was uh, basically two minutes plus five minutes plus three minutes so this will be equal to basically 10 minutes and if we want to calculate it by uh, seconds so it will multiply by 60 so in this much part b part will can be written as 600 seconds so this much b part can be written as 600 seconds and the height was given to us, which is 13.33. Uh, 13.333 meter per second, which we already uh, calculated first. Now, let us see that our answer is going to be the same or not to the previous method. We have uh, this uh, distance of 5 uh, minutes into 60, and 300 seconds was part A. And the similar method 10 minutes because 2 plus 5 plus 3 is going to be 10 into 60 seconds, it is going to be 600. And velocity is given to us putting the value of A, which is 300, putting the value of B, which is 600, and putting the value of H, which is 13.33. In this formula, we'll get a value which is 300 plus 600 divided by 2 multiplied by 13.33. We'll get a total displacement of 6000 meters, which is good, which is the same answer as we did in the previous method as well so this is an alternate method whichever you like you can use that method
Moving on to question number eight, a cricket ball is hit vertically upwards and uh, returns to the ground in six seconds later. Calculate the maximum height reached by the ball, initial velocity of the ball, which is uh, calculated to be 45 meters, and the uh, initial velocity is also calculated, which is 30 meters per second. For that, we can assume a ball is moving up and down like that. For that, we have it as a solution. The time taken for that ball is six seconds for going up and down, or only going up we have to divide it by 2. So, the only time for 6 seconds for going up and down, we have to calculate the value of the time for only going up. So, maximum height is uh, age. We have to find out that how much velocity uh, it had to reach a height of age. For that, we must have initial velocity as well. For that, we are, have a final velocity because at that point, the final velocity is going to be 0 because I told you already, in the case of a tennis ball, that when it reaches the maximum height, the velocity becomes equal to zero. Now we are using the first equation motion v f is equal to v i into g t. We are using g because uh, in this case the value of uh, g is taken to be a constant because it is moving under the action of gravity, and we are taking it only while it is going up. That means against the gravity. That is why the negative sign is there. Putting the values, we get. 0, VF is 0, VI plus 10 minus 10 because moving against the gravity into uh, 3. Our answer is going to be 0 is equal to VI plus minus 30, 0 is equal to uh, VI minus 30 going to the other side. So the initial velocity is 30 meter per second. For the maximum velocity, we must assume the initial velocity which we already calculated is going to be 30 meter per second. That means the starting velocity over here is going to be. 30 meter per second, just like this. Now the final velocity we have, we have the uh, time taken as well. Now we are going to solve it. The gravitational acceleration is taken to be minus 10 meter per second, which is already constant value. The time is uh, three seconds while going up. We are using the second equation motion h maximum is equal to vi into t plus half gt square, putting in the values. It will be vi is equal to 30 multiplied by three plus half into minus uh, 10 into 3 square, it will be 90 because 3 multiplied by 30 is 90 and 3 square is 90 multiplied by minus 10 is going to be 90 divided by 2, it is going to be 45 or you can say half of uh, 90 or 45, so 90 minus 45 it is going to be 45 meters and that is our answer, the initial velocity 30 meter per second and the displacement it made in that uh, change in velocity is basically 45 meters. Second last question is say, which says uh, when the brakes are applied, the speed of the train decreases from 96 kilometer uh, per hour. That means you have to write now per hour. Slash it down 96 uh, kilometer per hour to a velocity of uh, 48 kilometer per hour in just uh, in the time in the. 800 meters, how much further will the train move before coming to rest? Assuming the retardation to be constant, the displacement is, we have to find out is 266.66 uh, .66 meters. We have a train because we have to imagine the initial velocity is in kilometers. We have to convert that kilometer into meter per second. So we can convert it into meter per second, uh, 226.66 .66 meters. And the final velocity can also be calculated by the same method. But he says it covers the displacement of 800 meters and the final velocity is 48 uh, kilometers per hour. So first of all, let us convert how we convert uh, basically kilometer uh, into meter per second. We multiply by 1000 and divide it by 3600. Uh, 3, we get 96 into uh, 10 because these two zero will cancel this case. Just a little trick to simplify the question. These two zero cancel out, so it will be 96 into 10 divided by 36. It will be 26.666 meter per second. Now the train has achieved a velocity of 48 kilometers per hour, which is also be converted into meter per second. So it will be 48 into 1000. These two zero again cancel out, which is so it will be 48 multiplied by 10 divided by. 36, but will be 13.6, 13.33 meter per second. So it is the formula for velocity. Now, students, we have the initial velocity, final velocity, and we have the displacement. We have to calculate the 
acceleration as well. What is the acceleration for that? It reaches from 96 km to 48 km per hour. What was the acceleration? And uh, we have all the values, final velocity, initial velocity, and the displacement. We are using third equation of motion, 2as equal to vx square minus vi square. Putting in the values, which will be 2 into a into 800 into 13.6. 333 square minus 226.666 square. We we'll get uh, 2 multiplied by 800 into 1600. A is equal to uh, 177.777 minus 711.075 um, is the value of uh, V i square and V uh, x square is equal to 177.777. Putting the values, we get. Uh, 1600 is equal uh, into a is equal to minus uh, 533.29 and finding out the value of a taking 1600 to the side it will be minus 533.29 divided by 1600 it will be written as either 0 .0, 0 0.333 meter per second square which is negative because it is decreasing in speed or in fraction form you can write it down minus 1 over 3 so this is the decimal form and this is a fraction form the answer is going to be the same. Now, students, we have the acceleration as well. Now, we have acceleration which is minus 1 over 3 meter per second square. But the question says, how much further will the train move before coming to rest? So, the distance travel after applying the brakes. It applied the brakes over here. How much further it will go from here to the end? Like this. How much further it can go from after applying the brakes? Uh, of 48 kilometers per hour. The brakes were applied at 96 kilometers per hour. But how much more distance can travel after 48 kilometers per hour? Because the velocity is decreasing as it goes to the end, or and over here, the final velocity will be equal to zero because it's say coming to rest. So VI is equal to 13.33 meter per second because at this point the initial velocity we are taking. But in the previous case, it was the final velocity. But now, at this point, it is going to be taken as initial velocity, which is 13.33 uh, meter per second. The final velocity, because it stopped at the end, is going to be zero. The acceleration is taken to be a minus one over three, which we are getting already over here. The displacement from here to here has to be found out. And for that matter, the displacement for that matter. And the integral by third equation motion which says 2as equal to vx square minus vi square. So putting in the values, we get 2 into a which is minus 1 over 3 into s is equal to vf which is 0 minus vx uh, square which is 0 minus 13.333 square which is vi. Solving this, we'll get uh, minus 2 over 3s because there's a negative sign over here and there's a negative sign over here. These two negative signs basically cancel out with each other. So there is no negative now. And 2 over 3 goes to the other side, it will be 3 over 2. So this will be multiplied by 177.77. So the displacement is uh, 533.31 divided by 2. So the displacement is from the breaking point to the end is 266.66 meters. So this is the displacement of the train after uh, 48 uh, km per hour brakes were applied and it reached to zero. So this was the displacement and that was our answer as well. Now the last part of this question, in the above problem, find the time taken by the train to stop after the brakes were applied. Now you have to assume the previous question, which was uh, question 9. The same solution was there. The car which had an initial velocity of uh, 96 km or you can say 26.66 meters, it moved the displacement of 800 meters per meters and acceleration was found out to be uh, minus 1 over 3 and the final velocity was taken out to be 30.33. But it basically got to rest, basically, we have to find the acceleration for the whole body which is going to be the same which is minus 1 over 3 meter per second square. But how much time it took from 96 uh, km per second or km per hour to get to 0 km per hour or we can say how much time it took in the velocity of the train when it had the initial velocity of 26.66 meter per second to 0 meter per second. For that, 
we have an acceleration of one minus one over three, and we have the displacement for this much part only. But we have to calculate the total displacement from here till the end part. So the final velocity is going to be zero point uh, zero meter per second, and the displacement in that part was basically uh, twenty six point six six meters. Now. We have the initial velocity, which is basically starting point over here, which is 96 into 1000 divided by 3600. We can uh, represent it by uh, meter per second, which is 26.666 meters. The final velocity at the rest point is 0 meters per second. The acceleration is given to us is minus 1 over 3 meter per second square because it is acceleration. This is square. The inner side should be perfect. So the time taken for that body, we have to calculate that time, how much time it took from here to here. Basically, we can calculate that much time as well. But this is for the old question. For the new question, we have to calculate the time in this whole period. Otherwise, it will be the half of that time. That means 40 seconds over here. We have to calculate the time from here till the end part. This is the half of the time. After this time, it break down towards zero bar. Now, for this, we are basically putting the values: the initial velocity, uh, the first equation motion, the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus at. Putting in the values zero, final velocity was zero because the train stopped. The initial velocity was taken to be in the start over here was 36.666, and plus acceleration is minus one over three plus t. We are taking um, or solving the question. So 0 is equal to 26.66 minus 1 over 3. The negative sign will be multiplied by plus, it will be minus. Taking the minus sign to the other side, it will be 1 over 3 t is equal to 26.66. So t takes to the other side. Now, what has happened over here? I have just put the value of 1 over 3 on the other side. It was uh, basically multiplying with t. So what I've done is 26.666 divided by 1 over 3. So if it is dividing, so when it goes up, it basically multiplies. So that is why I've written 26.666 multiplied by 3. Moving on to the next part, the answer is going to be 79.999 or you can other words say that it is rounding off to be 80 seconds and that is our answer. And that is how we get 40 seconds, the half of the time after half of time when the brakes are applied were here for 40 seconds but for the full part the when the train was starting from the initial point of 96 km per hour the initial velocity to the final velocity zero it took 80 seconds to stop that train i hope you enjoyed the session of this uh, acceleration uh, time taken initial velocity and final velocity inshallah we'll meet again take care of yourself allah peace.